Welcome to First Aid Copites, a podcast for Delaware's Liverpool supporters and their friends. Hey, welcome to the latest edition of First Aid Copites. Uh, I'm joined by Sean, and hopefully we're joined by Daz uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Uh, we're recording this actually two days after Liverpool beat Bournemouth by nine. Um, uh, well, if you listen to this podcast, uh, I guess you're not surprised anymore that we won by nine goals to nil, which uh, equaled apparently our best league performance uh, in, in our history. Uh, there's a nine nil back in 1989, and then there's a 10-1 sometime in the 19th century uh don't have the details on that one um but uh i do remember steve nichol scored in the in a couple of goals in the nine nil uh against palace um one for the kids um so nine nil is bournemouth sean not a bad way to get going uh you know i don't want to claim too much but i think i did say last week this is either going to be tense or it could get ugly i uh i'm, I'm really glad it turned into the ugly um I have, a, I have a theory that teams that are playing really well um generally will like take it easy once they're five or six to the good um as liverpool did at united last season maybe a sign that they're still working out a few things that they kept going till the end and could indeed have had 10 on a number of occasions so what did you make of it yeah, I, I mean, I, I thought the same thing. I thought if we if we were in form, we probably wouldn't have piled on quite as much. Um, but we we really needed that result. And um, yeah, I mean, I was talking to, to you before we started recording. Like, I'd, I'd like to go back and watch the United match back again and watch this match back again to try to better understand what we were doing differently. But you know, it's kind of hard to tell because we were just all over them from from the first minute. Um, and I do think part of that is that Bournemouth just look like a t- like they're just terrible. Um, I, don't, I don't think that they have the talent. And um, yeah, I think Scott Parker is way out of his depth. Um, but, you know, we, we did look much, much better. We, we definitely seem much more lively. Um, you know, it was almost like any time one of their players got the ball, it seemed like one, if not two, of our players were right in their face, which is kind of how we normally play. Um, you know, like positionally, it seemed like everybody was was better. Um, there were, you know, there were lots of very good performances. Um, you know, and it just kind of all came together. Um, and yeah, you know, it's it's the type of win we really needed, and. Uh, you know, so hopefully we can get the season started now. Getting the season started. Um, well, I think we'll talk in a few minutes about uh, Newcastle uh, and Everton. But did want to dig a bit deeper into uh, tactics. Because um, I I think just watching the game, um, it seemed obvious that, that Diaz was was playing like more in the centre than he was compared to where he was against United. Mm-hmm. Which, which obviously, I think we talked about this, that, that you know, pick people kind of looked dangerous and didn't have actually bad games going forward, just that they were collecting the ball against United way too deep. Um, that clearly wasn't the case against, against Bournemouth. So uh, a word on tactics um, and, and kind of throw into that, you know, Trent was, was doing his midfield role, it looked like, and Elliot was doing great work on the left side of the, in, the, the inside left channel. Um, which, which I think was intentional, um, but it, it felt to me like people knew what they were doing at mm-hmm. United. I don't know whether they didn't know what they were doing or didn't quite understand the game plan in the same way. Yeah, I mean, it, to, to me, the most obvious difference was Fabinho. I, I thought Fabinho looked like, you know, the Fabinho that we're used to seeing. Um, I, I, it, it seemed like he almost dominated that midfield on its own at times. Um, it just was taking the the, the game. Um, you know, I think that's a big part of the reason why we we had the control that we're used to seeing. And then I think Henderson was also, I think that's the best game he's ever played in that left-sided midfield role. He was very uh, positionally um, sound, you know, he and he was playing in the positions where we need that role to play. Um, 
And so I think, you know, I, you know, again, I have to watch it back, but I, my sense is that the combination of those two were, were like probably the biggest reason that we looked just a fundamentally different team. Like Fabinho is playing the role he normally plays, which then allows Trent and Harvey to play the role they're supposed to play. And then, um, you know, Henderson playing in that left side was specifically not getting caught um, going too far forward all the time. And um, so then that, you know, I think frees up Robertson and Diaz to do more of what they do. And and it also allows Firmino to play, you know, the role that he's supposed to be playing further up rather than constantly kind of coming back, trying to help out and get the ball. And so everything, you know, you just fix a couple of those key positions and I think everything just fit together better. That was my sense anyway. Again, I haven't watched it back and it was hard to tell because – we were just all over them from minute one. But, um, you know, again, like the most obvious thing to me was like not only that Fabinho was playing, but that he was like back in the form that we're used to seeing him in. Whereas, you know, the first game in particular, I think he was a little off. Um, so that that would be the primary one for me. And it goes back to, to you know, the thing where in Klopp's system, if one piece is out of place, you know, sometimes the whole thing falls apart. Yeah, so I don't think we touched on this enough because I, I think this is I think this is a different system. And a part of the you know a couple of pieces that are different are um the left side of midfielder. So so the Athletic did a piece today about how basically City cop copied our approach against Palace by overloading um again on the right side of the I guess the left side of the Palace defense, um, which they showed all these screenshots of Milner, uh, basically in the half space. Um, that the, the attracted the defenders over to him and thereby created overloads for Trent and, and Elliot, which we didn't really take advantage of uh, to the extent that we should. Um, and, and Henderson, if you noticed, showed up quite a few times on mm -hmm. the right side. And clearly there's something going on with, with Elliot. I think the big difference, I don't know if it was one piece, is I, I think the big piece was Diaz at this point not really understanding what his role had been uh, and he sort of fell into playing through the middle when we went down to 10 against Palace but in the other games perhaps being a far too wide and not kind of creating enough when he was getting the ball not being able to kind of run at people in really dangerous spaces um, so I think I think that it, 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 the, there's like cogs to put in, into play here uh, you know I think it's fair to say, I think Klopp's comments on Robertson suggested that was easily his best game of the season. Oh, yeah, it absolutely was. Yeah. When you've got those things, when, when you've got him playing like that, you've got Diaz much more of a threat than you know, against any team. I think you're creating challenges. But to your point, I don't see anything in this Bournemouth team that would suggest, to be fair, that three of their four matches have been against uh, teams that, are, that you would expect to beat them comfortably but not seeing a lot that would suggest that they are not going to get relegated at the end of the season. Um, yeah, so I, I think there is a change formation, uh, and I think it may have taken the uh, the, the meeting that he described, uh, Klopp, uh, in his press conference, um, where apparently he did all of the talking, or at least most of the talking. Um, so I don't know if that's, that sounds like more like a lecture than a, than a meeting. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, things things look good there. Okay, so um, any any other thoughts about, about the game? You know, I I I, I felt like uh, the, other, the other thing I had is obviously I was watching it with a group of people. It it felt, frankly, like just too easy, and, and I, I felt like people had loved the, people's attention started to wander um, at the uh, in the in the second half. <laughs> um... No, I mean, just, I mean, you could call out a lot of individual performances, but I I thought, um, you know, I, I thought in particular, uh, Diaz, Bobby, and Fabinho were all just outstanding. Um, I thought, you know, Bobby looked like, you know, the Bobby of three years ago. Diaz, I, I thought, you know, Diaz was unbelievable. If it wasn't for the fact that Bobby had two goals and three assists, I, I would have picked Diaz as man of the match. Yeah. Um, he was just all over the place, you know, just, um, and, and ironically, um, I mean, I don't think Salah had a bad game, but he, he certainly wasn't standout and he missed a couple of really good chances and, um, it didn't matter at all. 
you know, I mean, and, and that's that's kind of nice too that in a game like that, Sala can, you know, not score, not not really be that central, and and we still can dominate the match. So, um, you know, yeah, it was just you know, it, it was it was nice to get a pick me up, you know, and and uh, I think you know our expected goals was around four, or so. You know, and that's the way it works. Sometimes we we bang in nine yeah. on an expected of, of four, and then there'll be other games where, you know, it'll be higher. But um, that's still really high, and we were creating a lot of good chances, a lot of really good finishes. I thought, and Harvey Elliott was great again. I mean, I, I think Harvey's been overall our best midfielder um, consistently over the over the four games, um, which is which says a lot about uh, him at his age, but. The finish for his goal was amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I thought, you know, obviously Trent's goal was was outstanding. It was one of those where you could kind of see it coming. But, um, you know, the way he hit that ball is just, you know, they're just there just aren't very many people in the world that can hit a ball like that. Yeah. Um, and I, I heard somebody kind of compare it to like Pete Beckham. You know, it was that kind of ball where just smashed it and had that kind of dip with no spin, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, he was, he was definitely back, back to be in the trend that we're used to seeing with the crossing. I think kind of all around, he just, he just looked a lot more comfortable. And um, the other thing that I, I, I was, you know, heard someone comment on is that you have to remember he, Trent has not played alongside Harvey and, and Joe Gomez, like really at all. And so that's that's two totally different people. I mean, yeah, they played. We played in the in the title winning season. Joe Gomez played with Van Dyke, but that's been over two years now. It's been a long time. And um, you know, we we also talking about tactics and systems. We also played a completely different system that season. Yeah. So um, you know, it's it's there, there's a lot to kind of adjust to and get used to there. And I, I think Trent looked a lot more comfortable for sure. Well, back then as well, he had Henderson, and one of the things he clearly did a lot of was drop back to allow um, Trent to move forward. And it seems like we're, we're, we're taking more risks now, which you know that's when Lane gets cast upon um, uh, Trent about various goals. But one of the things that um, I, I was reading about last season, we can get on to talk about this in, in the next part of our games to come, is that Liverpool uh, last season, Allison saved nine uh, one-on-ones mm-hmm. uh, that had really high XG. So so they, they, they essentially identified that he'd saved us nine goals. Um, and the, interestingly, I think it was only two relegated teams had gave up more one-on-ones than we did. Um, so, so, you know, I, I think this is a risk we're prepared to take. Um, mm-hmm. uh, where back then, Hendo was maybe covering and maybe Fabinho would drop, and now it's just Fabinho and the two central defenders that they're relying on to cover most of those things. Well, I also think Joe Gomez is a lot better suited to to doing that covering too because of his pace, mm-hmm. you know, as opposed to Matip. I think I think that's something that Kanate brought also is that, that you know they're very. I think ideally they want the defender in that role to be very quick so that they can recover because they know that players on that side are going to get sucked up field. Um, and then, you know, at least when in the past, when Tiago's played that left side role and, and Ginny did the same thing, part of their role is to sort of sit back and try to help prevent against a counterattack. Um, and I think that's a big part of what we hadn't seen. Maybe that's a tactical change. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that that ha- having that, um, kind of guard against the counterattack is, is something that's pretty critical to the system in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, much, much we could say, I'm sure about the, um, about the system and the importance of press and blocking off people's ability to find, um, like the, the likes of Wilfred Zaha, for example. Um, do you want to finish off though, uh, with, I, I don't think enough has been made of Gomez's return. Mm-hmm. The, the fact that he does not seem to have lost any pace, which I think you would point it out with that kind of injury is a very common side effect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then final thing is Elliot's first Premier League goal for Liverpool, Bobby Firmino's 100th, well, 99th and 100th goals for Liverpool, which I think puts him 
uh, 19th on the all-time list of Liverpool goal scorers, which is a pretty nice landmark. So we'll leave it there. We're going to look ahead in part two. Uh, and... Hey, welcome back to part two, First Day Copites. Daz has been able to join us as we look ahead to the, the week um, in store. Uh, we've got Newcastle on Wednesday night at Anfield, and then the early game on Saturday is Everton. So let's start, Daz, with you, and we'll start with the Newcastle game. Um, we, uh, Sean and I were talking before we started recording that Newcastle appeared to struggle a little bit away from home. They, uh, I mean, they've got two draws, but in both games that probably should have been multiple goals behind. Um, well, certainly in the Wolves game before they scored in what the 90 something minute. Mm. Um, what, what, what are you hoping for in that game? And clearly, you know, part of this is also going to be what frame of mind are we going to be in going into that game, having um, scored uh, every five seconds against Bournemouth? Well, I think I tweeted out like, you know, you need to save some of this because the last time we put seven past Palace, we couldn't, we couldn't, neither love nor money could we get a goal in the next the next couple of matches um i know you guys covered part one and part one you covered the match itself but i think it's a real tail lifter for us um from what i, I did watch i did watch just just to jump ahead i did watch or jump back i did watch the newcastle game or the large portions of it and i was surprised how easily the wolves got in behind them they were they were really exposing them on the flanks and I think Kieran Trippier is, is a great distributor of the ball, but he can be got at as a fullback. So if he's not injured, because I think he went off, or he was, I know that he, it looked like he pulled a hamstring or something and he hobbled through quite a few minutes before. I think they pulled him off, if I remember correctly. Um, if, if he's not there, I think, Lu, uh, I think Luis Diaz is going to have, he's going to have fun. Um, but we did see him come in a lot more central, which I think is what we expected from him. But if he, if he does decide to float out wide, I think that he'll get some joy down that left-hand side. Yeah. Um, so, Maxson, I, 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 I do enjoy watching him play. Uh, it, it's He loses the ball quite frequently, but he's still a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. And when he's good, he's very, very good. So I think that's that, that's one matchup that you probably be looking for down our, our right-hand side. Um, they just signed that Isak kid. Am I right about that? And yes. I, don't, I don't think he could play this weekend because he... Um, he couldn't get the work permit in time. Yeah. There's a pretty good chance we'll see some form of cameo. I know that his numbers weren't that great, but I've watched him play before in Champions League matches, and he's he's a handy player. He gets himself around. So that that, that could be, and I don't know if they'll go with Chris Wood. He's he's uh, he's pedestrian. He's agricultural, really, is what is the best way of putting it. And but he does seem to enjoy playing against our back line. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see him start and then Isa come on once he's kind of tenderized the middle a little bit, but. Uh, look, I like our chances. It's this. This depends on on what we carry through from last game. I think it's what you were intimating there, Paul. Was yeah. What can we? What what should we expect uh, after that? Because you know, in my in, in my reptilian brain, it's sometimes when you see hammerings like that, the next game can like the intensity can drop off slightly, and and we're not in a place where we can allow that to happen. The one good thing about that 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 heavy defeat or the heavy win for us at least was that we can start, we've jabbed some of these contenders back. I think they're going to be like, Oh shit, maybe we can't come inside and, and, and try and get at Liverpool. Cause that's a, that's a, that's a pretty long, long jab we laid out there to, to, to give ourselves some space from, from upcoming fixtures. Uh, because we became that team that, that, that Klopp wanted us to be the team that's gnarly that no one wants to play against. So I think that's one good thing. For, well, that's a, there's numerous good things, but that's one of the bigger ones. Is like I think it'll give a lot of teams pause before they, especially, come to Anfield. So if we can get in amongst the pigeons early, like we did, um, we, at Palace, we just couldn't finish, but we, it was a good first 15, 20 minutes. Same against same against Bournemouth, we managed to beat their press and and we and we punished them for it, which is which is good to see because. I think Adam Smith said on the Anfield wrap, I just didn't see where the goals were coming from, what they, or what they looked like. And we saw every manner of goal, yeah. own goal, scrappy goal, 750 yard thunder bastard. It was, we had, we were all out there. So I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for Wednesday again. I know that like, last week was, uh, I, I took a little brief pause just to give myself some, some clarity <laughs> around what was important in life. And the, the Reds definitely helped. And, and now you've got, you've got your priorities all screwed up again with Liverpool, Liverpool with their tails up. <laughs> 
yeah, what, what, what am I going to do? <laughs> so, so I do think, so, so um, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to mention this every week, uh, you know, my prescience about it could be ugly or, uh, or, you know, it could be very tight. I don't think it's going to be in between. And it clearly got ugly. But I think one of the things that was absolutely key to that, and I think going into these two games is, the first time in what eight games they scored the first goal, mm-hmm. uh, and and it felt like once they scored the second goal, then you know, like all, all cares and worries just absolutely disappeared. Um, and it does feel like a lot will depend, you know, to to, to your point, uh, Sean, about winning seven nil at Palace and then not being able to buy a goal in the next game. I think a lot will depend on getting the first goal and getting it early. Uh, and uh, that will make a huge difference to how this game plays out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm feeling a little more confident than I was. I think, like you know, last week when we talked about it, I was thinking like a tight two two one victory against Newcastle. But um, they have they have a lot of their key players injured now, and, and they may or may not even play in the match. But if they do, they're they're probably going to be 100. percent It's just just pulled up the list. So St. Maximum apparently has an injury. Caleb, uh, Caleb Wilson, Trippier, yeah. John Joe Shelby, and and the biggest one, Bruno, Bruno Grimaris, who's been easily their best player this year. Um, I mean, that's a huge advantage for us. To, if Even if some of them play and aren't 100%, it's, yeah. um, you know, so I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to blow them away necessarily, but I, I guess I, I'm more – confident that we'll get a result um given you know some of those issues that they're going to have I, I, you know that, that list was was making me think wow this is tough for them and then you mentioned john joe shelby and i wasn't so sure that was going to make much <laughs> <laughs> he, he did score at outfield didn't he last year i think well it's just more like you know if they're missing bruno gamars and john joe shelby what's their midfield going to look like you know I, I don't know i mean that's that could be a real problem for them um we'll see but um well, another good thing I think in our favor that I just thought about was, and I think Sean, you'd mentioned this, we're one of the few teams that plays two, three times in a week. Yeah. It's almost like we're built, we're better when, when, when we have that kind of rhythm. And now we've like, rhythm is definitely a dancer after, after this weekend. So, and with like the uphill that they've got to get to try and get guys fit for, for a game, like four days after or three days after the, their last game, they, they, they could be a bit leggy. It, it, it definitely possible. And did I did I see one of you share that earlier? Um, that, that we've got three players back in training. Yeah. Um, so there's a report today, and I, I saw a couple of pictures actually. You know, uh, Matip, um, Curtis Jones, and uh, your man Ramsey are uh, back in training. Daz. Um, so I, I don't I don't know how soon we'll see Ramsey in the way, like but <laughs> but it's I mean it's it's definitely great to have. Matip and, and Jones back. I mean, that that really makes things a lot more comfortable yeah. for the midfield and, and uh, center backs, uh, especially with the, the games picking up soon. So let's quickly, there's not there's not 72 hours between that game and the game against Everton. So let's let's kind of have a word on that. Um, like I'll go to you first, Daz. Um, I mean, last year, obviously, we played outstandingly well against a very poor team. Um, I we already struggled at Old Trafford, which historically we had, except for the last year. Um, any apprehension going into playing them? Because they're clearly not a great football team on, on any level. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know what Neil, Mr. Sign Neil Morpay, I'm not quite sure what, what that's going to result in. Um, <laughs> Sending uh, off. Well, well it, it, it is interesting, isn't it? Like, I was talking to a Brighton fan, funnily enough, yesterday. And it's like, well, we sold supposedly, you know, uh, more pay and two of our best players and we actually look better without them um so expectations around the, the derby early kickoff hmm. yeah it's always a tight affair with those those guys it's what if they if they can't beat us with style they'll try and match us with steel and so if I, I I would suspect that there's going to be a lot of thunderous challenges that go in early just to see what the ref's appetite is for allowing shit to happen because you're seeing it just to expand more. You're seeing a lot of full-blooded challenges that were that were cardable offenses last season that aren't even getting blown now. 
And I think because it is a derby, I think that the who's the ref? Do we know? No, but I'm sure we could look that up. How well, do they, do they announce it that far? Because there's two games this week. I wonder usually Mondays, they, don't they announce the following weekend? No. Yeah. Well, there's one midweek as well to Sean's point, so they might. Then. But yeah. whoever it is, I, I think it'll have, depend heavily on who's on who it is. Um, if it's Tierney, he's probably very happy to watch two scout sides kick lumps out of each other. So, oh, he'll red card anyone from our team then. <laughs> Maybe three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 you know me, man. I, I always get cagey around around matches, the, the derbies, and and against the Manchester team. So. Look, they're a, they really are a shite team, and they're struggling to find anyone. Like, how, they've got a lot of money in the bank right now, and t- just from transfers. I'm, I'm not sure what their, their loan repayments look like because I know that they were in trouble last year, but yeah. they've got money. They just can't get anyone in because no one wants to play for them because they're shite. So, yeah. And what are they got two ties now? Yeah. They, they've been, re- I mean, they, they have not been good. They, they drew to Brentford. You know, in the game they they really should have lost. Um, they drew at home to to Forest, yeah, in the and game. then they lost to Villa, who have been terrible. Yeah. And they barely beat Fleetwood in the League Cup. They won one nothing. Yeah. So they're not a good team. Well, for them, it's like it's it's like it's just problems stacked up on problems. Frank Lampard is not a good coach. I don't right. know that people are trying to make a case for like he did great stuff at Dobby. He, he bankrupted Dobby. Mm-hmm. He went to Chelsea. They gave him like oodles of money and time and, and talent. And he fucked that up. Sorry, you're gonna have to hit the button again. <laughs> and and now he's doing like he's just gonna he'll drag Everton down. Like barring that, I was it was it Newcastle they beat last year to stay up ostensibly. They played with 10 men and they they got that yeah. last minute winner. They got really lucky. Yeah. And and everybody acted like he was the hero, and I was like, "You guys should really be a lot better than this." You know, like, but they give him broad latitudes because of yeah. his playing career, because he's English. That's it. He's yeah. garbage. And I said, I said to I said to to to, to Chelsea fans, uh, died in the wall. Chelsea fans are like, he's not going to be good for you. Oh, he just, you give him a chance. He's like, yeah. he's not good. He's just not good. And but so he not only can. Not only his position, like, is really, really limiting what what he can, who he can bring in. He's also like, it's him, and I don't think a lot of world class players want to come and play for him. Yeah, like the football. So one thing I'd say is though they're not conceding a lot of goals. Um, yeah, true. They, they don't they don't look great, but they they probably look more solid with Cody playing um, than I don't know Michael Keane or one of those other characters. Well, I, I I think Tarkowski is probably more to do with it than Cody, to be honest with you. I mean, and they're playing a back three, and I I doubt. I mean, I haven't watched them much this year, but I doubt that they're actually attacking very much. So if you sit sit in that back three with your wing backs, you know, it turns into a back five sometimes. Yeah. They, um, but yeah, they got. I mean, they got. So they they played Holgate and Tarkowski. Um, I mean, they're both pretty. They're both rel- like not bad center backs. So, you know. Tarkowski is better than anybody they've had back there in a while. So, I, I guess the big difference is that they their record with Mina was much better than without Mina, and now that Cody's playing and Mina's out again or injured, then they they looked more solid. Uh, and you're right, going forward, I think I've watched three of the four games. I didn't see the Brentford game. Um, the goals they did score came out of well, I think they were, they, they were just they were goal goals at the in those two the forest and the villa games goals at the end of the game when they sort of i guess done enough to sit defensively for for an hour and 10 minutes and then through the kitchen sink and whoever they were playing and like managed to scrape a goal in both those games if we were on song we'll pick them apart i i, I do i do think that but there's again it's a derby and there's so there's so many tangentials and and and, and yeah. stuff that like if you're playing against someone else, wouldn't wouldn't come into effect. And just with these guys, it's it's just it's always it's always a different situation. Even when we, we beat them and we look good, you just you're always on the edge of your seat. So I think I'm not making any more predictions because I said at the beginning of the season we'd be 15 points good by by Saturday. <laughs> and we've got what six, five, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I you know. Um... They've been playing a Wobi in midfield. I think they did bring in Onana, who's probably helping them out a lot too. He's supposed to be a good player. 
And um, I mean, I, I don't think much of Cody as a defender, honestly, Paul, but he is a good ball player. And, and so that could kind of help their system a little bit with him in the middle there. Um, well, well, we, 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 we should, we should smash them. My worry is that they're going to come out, like you said, Daz, and just play, play like shit house the entire time. And, um, you know, I, I don't have much confidence to no matter who the official is that they're just going to allow it to go on. And I, 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 I worry mostly not even that we're going to win the match. I'm pretty confident that we'll win the match, but just that our players might get hurt like a couple of years ago. Um, Did you catch what uh, Frank said after the Brentford game, actually? No. He said, he said our performance was better than it was against United. We deserve to win this by 4-0. Well, I mean, they, they, got, they got destroyed by Brentford. Yeah. I mean, they you know they they tied one one, but Brentford was had more than double their expected goals. They had sixty percent of the possession. I mean, they had they had twenty shots. I mean, they were terrible against Brentford. They deserved to lose the game. Yeah. So so I think there is you know there's the derby factor. There's the you know there's just the way they seem to play. Um, the other know. thing I throw in there is that they're playing Leeds this week and they go to Leeds and and I will not I'm not going to be surprised if they get absolutely hammered in that game because no. Leeds have have looked they haven't always got the results but they've looked pretty good so far this year and Everton have not and and Leeds is not always an easy place to play when they're on form either. That's Thomas so, Tuchel. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, sounds good. Um, so no predictions then then does yeah. Uh, Six points would be nice, but hey, let's uh, let's see let's see where we in go. one game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean for Everton, I like that prediction. <laughs> I'll take Newcastle. That. I'm going to stick with my two to one, even though I, I'm more confident now. I think Everton. I think we'll win three to one, but I think it's going to be an ugly match. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just I think they're going to they're going to be nasty. Um, I think in both games, if we score early and score first, yeah. then they will be different games than they would otherwise have been. Let me ask you this: Do we start Nunez? He's back, right, for the for the, the, the derby. Yep. Do you throw him in cold for that, or do you give him like let Bobby tenderize it a little bit and then? I don't think we will. I think Bobby was so good on the weekend. I I think he deserves a little run personally. Um, he was not good to start the season, but I I thought he was he was very good. It's the best I I think I've seen him in years in, in that game this weekend. A couple, couple of quick things. His numbers, by the way, against United were okay. Um, I think a lot of it was about where he ended up picking the ball up and where his two yeah. partners were like 100 yards away on the other side of the field. Yeah, and, and, and that, that was like, I think that was more of a result of the system just falling apart. He kept dropping weight deep to pick the ball up because he wasn't getting it. The other thing I would say uh, is it's two games, uh, that make three games in a week. Um Mm. That might be the so I, I, instinctively I, I'd go with Sean's comment that I wouldn't bring him straight back, but three games in a week might change that. Yeah, true. So, uh, I wonder if we sell him out and put Salah yeah. central this week or something like that. Well, I guess we, will, we will see. Okay, yeah. with that, um, enough of prediction stuff. Uh, we'll end part two and then come back briefly just to talk about any observations about what's happening elsewhere, whether it be related to imaginary new signings. Or, uh, or how City copied our template against Palace. Hey, welcome back to part three of First Day Copites. Uh, we're gonna just take a quick look at what's going on elsewhere this weekend. Uh, felt like everybody that we would want to have lost didn't and uh, took three points. Um, I don't know which, what caught your eye, but one of the things that you might wanna start with is, uh, I, I didn't see much of the Spurs game but I, they, they, Conte is, is not really interested in playing nice football at all, is he? Yeah. Um, but the thing I find uh, disturbing is how easy people find to dismiss them uh, as, as potential you know, participants in the title race. And I think I've said this before, given that Conte is the only one of three managers currently coaching in the Premier League who's, already, who's coached the team and got 90 points. Um, so you know, kind of he's, he's, he's been there. Um, but it is, it's not good to watch. Oh, not good to watch. Um, but I'm, I'm still concerned about them as much probably as, no, not as much as City, but, but concerned about them. I mean, I, so Daz, I don't know if you want to talk about Spurs because I don't know there's much more to say. Whether you want to talk about uh, Manchester City and them 
imitating our blueprint, like trying to get their star center forward sent off, that kind of thing. Well, I, clearly I made the wrong decision in what I viewed this weekend because I watched the Wolves-Newcastle game well, almost fully. I, I casually popped in on the West Ham Villa game. Um, and I, I predicted that Spurs were going to, I believe the expression I used with you, Sean, was face hump forest. And I, I, I don't think that the that the numbers that by and large would, would suggest that they did it. But to your point, and I said this as well, it's like they've got, they're playing Conte ball now. Yeah. It's he just he stymies and and he and he snuffles. It's not and it's not fun to watch. It's 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 basically Mourinho, two point two point one, and he's very good at it. Like it, he's very successful with it. So why change a winning formula? You've got Harry Kane who seems to have found his scoring touch. He could have had a hat trick yesterday, um, but it's. I, I think we can expect. I really hope Klopp's got like some sort of antidote for this this type of like sleep venom that, that he injects and in, the Conte injects into games because it's both the games that we played against them last season, it was the same thing. Wait for that mistake, pounce, put someone over the top. Son's quick enough to get onto it. It's Kulishevsky. Kulishevsky, is a, he's a very good little player, a very handy player. And then Kane, you know, like he can be dead and buried in a match, which if you look at the Chelsea game, he was... He was nowhere to be seen until he popped up and scored. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's and they seem to be firing and they're firing early. Again, it's like I think that they've 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 bought wisely. Um, they've got depth in a lot of positions. So they are, and I I think I said this of all of them that they were the ones that I I I've, I thought we could expect the most from, followed by by Arsenal. Arsenal really hasn't played anyone of any real substance just yet. And by all accounts, they struggled and they struggled this weekend against Fulham. Having said that we did too, but we, we were pretty woeful. We weren't, we didn't have our tails up after three wins on the trot. So um, yeah, to your point, Spurs, Spurs should be viewed as, as something to be reckoned with and handled and handled cautiously because the, the Chelsea game, they shouldn't have gotten a point out of. They, they, they absolutely should not have. I think the referees took that out of their hands. Yeah. But they're, they're hanging around. And that's and we said this when we were winning. Like that's what that's basically what you need to do. Yeah. Keep yourself in content contention. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to go in. And that's essentially what they're doing. So while we bleaked on about it being ugly, it is. And and it is, it's it's effective. And Sean, I think you were saying the same thing in, in the chat as well. It's like he's that's it, it, he's set up to spoil and it, and it works very well against teams like us that like to play football yeah. mm -hmm. actually one thing i'm left with in the whole conversation is i haven't had an update on hair pulling and where that sort of sits in terms of <laughs> would be kind of interesting although tuchel was yeah, out this for week. me <laughs> they did they did suspend tuchel for this week i think right i think just, he was in the stands just one game and conte was red carded and didn't even get banned yet what is that about so sean I'm, i know we've not got much time left i'll, I'll, I'll talk go to you about City a couple of interesting things uh one is Haaland was trying to get himself a break I think this week because uh, apparently according to Pep he can only play one once a week um that, that was part of what he said in his post match wow that's gonna um, be a problem but the perhaps the so you can go in that direction but uh I, there was a really interesting piece in the Athletic today where they talked about how uh, Palace against Palace City had imitated Liverpool's tactics of trying to an overload um particularly on the right hand side and they essentially identified that I think three of the four goals came from this overload that uh, that City had created, having copied us, because uh, they knew where Anderson and Guayhi were going to, what choices they were going to make as defenders when they were um, when there were more players there than they could cover. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't watch the City match, but you know, I, I did see the replays afterwards, where you know they. They ruled what looked like per a perfectly good goal that would have put Palace up three nothing off for I don't even know what the reason is. They said that somehow the player interfered with Ederson, which which is um, just nonsense. If you watch the replay, there's literally no difference between that and what happened in the Carrius goal in the Champions League final. And there wasn't a peep about that being a bad you know whatever. And then Holland you know kicks a you know Anderson in the face and. I don't I don't I mean if you look at the replay Holland's foot is up like above his head. Yeah. And 
what if that's not you know a high boot what is it, it's it's just you know the, it and that's either you know the the second or third game this year where they benefited from some questionable officiating which just sucks there's nothing we can do about that um Chelsea I didn't watch I watched a little bit but not a lot I was kind of peeping in they went down to 10 men um Connor Gallagher got sent off he he kind of looks out of his depth playing for them their midfield is not really squared away um but you know they ended up getting the win but they they were kind of lucky to get that win and then um you know the other ones Arsenal um you know, I I didn't watch the match closely, but um, they they did create a lot of chances. But um, you know, I just have a hard time seeing how that's going to work long term if they're relying on a midfield two of Granite Jaka and El Nini. I mean, that's that's just not going to fly with better teams, I don't think. Um, but you know, I think they I think their center back situation is much better. They got Saliba, and um, who's the other one? G- Gabriel. Yeah. Um, and they actually have Ben White playing right back this week, and I think because Tamiyasu's out, but like that's a better situation than what they've had for a long time there in their defense, anyway. Yeah. And I'm not a big believer in Arteta as a manager either, but having said all that, you know, they, they definitely look better with the addition of uh Gabby Jesus up, up front. Not that I think he's been a little bit overhyped lately, if you look at you know the um underlying stats and expected goals and assists but um you know it, he's still i think an improvement over Lacazette and um at least for their system and um you know so i think they'll be in the mix um well i think the other thing probably to say about them is um it'd be interesting to see what happens to them when they start to play two games a week yeah and europa i mean europa league is a bear because you're playing a thursday you know and that's going to hit them and united yeah. Um, I, I still feel like, you know, I don't, know, I don't think my original sense of this se- season has changed much. I think it'll be us and City one and two. Um, I think Chelsea and Spurs will be competing for third and fourth. And I, I think Arsenal will be right there, but I think they're probably still going to end up fifth in the long run. Um, I'm pretty sure that you, you, that's slightly different from where you were in a prediction show. I'll need to go back and check that. No, I, I just I said, you know, I, I thought, um, Spurs would finish third, Chelsea fourth. Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I, I thought there'd be a big gap between fourth and fifth. Probably less of a gap now because Arsenal looks a little better. But, you know, again, they haven't really played anybody, so it's hard to tell. Um, so, 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 Sean, I think we're out of time, but thanks yeah. to your uh, full league roundup, um, <laughs> probably didn't get a chance to get into uh, the new transfer that's no, no doubt flying into Liverpool as we speak. Yeah, well, hopefully that happens. Um, I don't know. And we we didn't we didn't even touch on Virgil's comments, but um, no. The other thing I'll say is 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 uh, Stevie Stevie G looks like he's in some trouble there at Villa, unfortunately. Yeah. They look awful. Does any final words? Um, Chelsea. Well, Ross Barkley left Chelsea with, by mutual consent, so I think we've sorted out our midfielder. <laughs> I saw someone else comment on that. <laughs> So not Ruben Nevers then. Oh, okay, all right. So <laughs> Ross Barkley, there would be a uh, yeah, there'd be <laughs> wouldn't want to be on Twitter the day after that happened. Um, <laughs> and with that in mind, uh, we will be back next week after Liverpool have hopefully been successful against Newcastle United at Anfield and Everton at Goodison Park. Uh, thanks so much to Sean and Daz. Uh, we'll see you next week. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share with a friend. Follow us at First Day Copites on Twitter. We only tweet and retweet from sources we think are credible. Finally, music is courtesy of Hypnotic. They're a Welsh electro pop band, and you can find them at https colon forward slash forward slash hyperfollow.com forward slash hypnotic. Hypnotic is H Y P E N O T I C. Thanks so much to them. <laughs>